see you. Um, it's quite a sight looking at all those quilts out there. Uh, I want to thank our quilters for gracing us with their projects for the year. Uh, today is a very packed Sunday. We've got a lot going on, namely a baptism at the 8 o'clock service, a baptism at the 1030 service, and a voters meeting after uh, the late service. Uh, we'll have communion today, sort of uh, continuous line style, and just a whole lot going on. It, it is the final official day of the regular year's Sunday school class, and so they'll have a carnival during the Sunday school hour, and then they, the Sunday school kids will sing during the 1030 service. So I'm having a hard time keeping it all straight in my mind, but for our purpose in the 8 o'clock service, we are graced with something we don't see a lot, a baptism in the early service. You know, it's hard to get everybody together this early, but we appreciate you making it work. Collins Edlin will be baptized here in just a few minutes. Um, the voters meeting after the service, I know this is the early crowd, but I encourage you to come back. We have uh, a real discussion about our relationship and support of Grace Lutheran School, uh, especially when it comes to a proposed capital campaign. So I'd love for you to be a part of that conversation. Let's see. Uh, like I said, two baptisms today. Um, I say it's the last official day of, of Sunday school, but just so you know, we'll continue to have Sunday school during the summer. Um, it'll be a little bit different. It'll be organized a little bit differently, uh, but we still are going to have our Bible hour uh, for the adults. We're still going to have Sunday school for the kids, and, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Just because we take a break from school, uh, we should still do our best to stay in God's Word. Um, our Wednesday services are about to make the switch over from 4.30 on Wednesdays to 6.30. Uh, that'll happen after Memorial Day. So one more 4.30 service before we switch over the following week. And then uh, the big thing coming up here is Vacation Bible School. That's going to be starting on June 5th. Uh, get the kids signed up. Uh, we could always take another few adult volunteers. And if you can't volunteer, you can help us out by taking a look at the donation board which is over by the elevators in the entryway. Um, there's a little board there with, with green cards. You can help provide supplies, uh, needed supplies for Vacation Bible School. So, glad you're here today. Uh, like I said, it is a, a busy day, but it's going to be a great day here at Our Redeemer. Let's take a few moments. Let's stand and greet one another, and then we will sing our opening hymn. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we invite the children forward for the children's message. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you today. Well, today I want to think a little bit about Jesus and some of the things that Jesus did. Now, at Christmas time, what do we celebrate about Jesus? What do you think? Uh, yeah, baby Jesus. Yeah, that Jesus is born at Christmas time. And the Bible tells us all about the things that Jesus did, how he grew up and how there were miracles and he healed people and he helped people and Jesus was perfect. And then he died on a cross, okay? And then he came back to life. So we hear about all of these things about Jesus. He does so many wonderful things. Well, today is a special day where we're celebrating something else that happens in the life of Jesus. And it's kind of a big word, and that big word is ascension. Oof, can you say that? Ascension. Yeah, it's a big word, and hmm, what does it mean? Well, let's take a look. I brought something to show us today. So Jesus, after he died on the cross, he rose and he came back to life. And then he lived and he taught people for 40 days. But do we see Jesus right now? Do we see him here with us? No, he's not here with us. So where did he go? Let's see. Here's Jesus. You see him? There he is. Okay, so here is Jesus. And Jesus, he rose from the grave and he lived and he taught people. And then on Ascension Day, something special happened. Okay, he was with the disciples, and then he went, which way is he going? He went up. Do you see him anymore? No. no, that's what happened. So Jesus went up into heaven on Ascension Day, and he promises that he's going to come back but we haven't seen him yet. He has not come back for our eyes to see, but Jesus promises that he will come back. And so he is with us, he lives with us, and he loves us, but we don't see him in his body. And so on Ascension Day, he went up into heaven. We'll do it one more time. He went up into heaven. It says he went up into the clouds, and then he was gone. <gasps> 
but he promised to send the Holy Spirit as a helper later. Okay, so Jesus ascends into heaven and we read about him and learn about him in the Bible and he promises to be with us always. So ascension, he goes up. Ascension means to go up, ascend. He goes up into the clouds. Whoa. What? Yes, I Oh, that sounds like a good thing to do today. Why don't we fold our hands and let's say a prayer, okay? Dear Jesus, we love learning about you in the Bible. Thank you for your promise to return again. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys can take a seat. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, gloriously took his throne, ascending to your right hand. Grant that we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue with our next hymn. And we're here for an 8 a.m. baptism. Not too bad. Collins is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And uh, this is one of my favorite things about, about the role of being a pastor. Because uh, baptism is a wonderful thing uh, ordained by Christ. And it carries with it really great gifts. Um, in Matthew chapter 28, before Jesus ascended into heaven, and we are celebrating the ascension today, uh, Jesus left his disciples with a command. He told them to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, by baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son 
in the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And that's why we're here today for the baptism of, of Collins. Our Lord Jesus Christ desires that she be... Here, I'll, I'll pass that over to this side. It's a little safer over here. All right, very good. All right, so why, anyways, we're moving on. And speaking about this sacrament of baptism, Martin Luther defined baptism like this, that baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. And so this baptism today is not just a symbolic act, but we believe that God is doing his saving work on Collins today. We hear what the scriptures say about holy baptism. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus tells his disciples that whoever is baptized and believes will be saved. In Acts chapter 2, St. Peter tells the Pentecost crowds to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, and they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And St. Paul writes to Titus, a pastor, that God saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And so what we're witnessing today is a tangible form of God's grace in which Collins will receive God's gifts of forgiveness and salvation. She will become an adopted child of God in whom the Holy Spirit dwells, the Holy Spirit who will work faith in her throughout her life. So, Jacob and Abby, God has given you the tremendous responsibility of raising and nurturing Collins. Not only do you have the responsibility of providing for her physical and emotional well-being, but also her spiritual well-being. Today, you are taking a vital step in caring for her spiritual life as well by bringing her in love to her creator and redeemer. And as she grows up, it will primarily be your responsibility to teach her about Jesus, to pray for her, to help her mature in her knowledge and reverence of the Lord. And so now I ask you both, Jacob and Abby, do you intend to fulfill this responsibility faithfully with diligence and joy? That's a good assist. Thank you. I asked the sponsors over here, Kirby, Desiree, Grant. Um, or are, are you Kristen? I'm Desiree. You're Desiree. Kristen's not. Okay. Sorry about that. Kirby, Desiree, Grant. You have been selected to serve as sponsors or godparents for Collins. This is an honorable and important role as you are called upon to remind her of the promises that are made to her today in her baptism as she grows up. It is your responsibility to encourage her in her walk of faith and to step into the role of a spiritual guardian if her parents become unable to do so. So I ask the three of you, do you intend to fulfill your role as a sponsor for Collins gladly and willingly? Very good. And I ask all of you, the members of our Redeemer, as Collins' church family, you share in these joys and responsibilities as well. On your part, do you pledge to support this child through the church's Christian education programs through your words of encouragement and your prayers. I ask you now, do you intend to fulfill your role as Collins' church family faithfully with joy and dedication? If so, then answer by saying, we will with God's help. That was a lovely sound. Collins, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Jesus Christ who was crucified. This time I invite the congregation to join us in professing the Apostles' Creed, which is a statement of the faith into which Collins is being baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, we can bring Collins over the baptismal font. Collins Joe Edland, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the mighty work that you have done today in claiming Collins as your own child. We thank you for blessing her with faithful parents and spiritual guardians who have brought her to the waters of baptism today. Help all of us to remember our own baptisms and treasure the gifts and promises you have given to us. We pray in the name of our triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my honor to introduce to you the newest member of our church family, Collins Edland. She is God's child, a disciple of Christ, and our sister in faith. Let's welcome her. She, she's a real champ. Okay, we got a few things for you before you leave. You can go ahead and extinguish that candle at this time. Here's a uh, certificate for her, for her baptism. There you go. The candle is yours. Uh, a nice, nice thing to remember is... You know, when Jesus talks about baptism, he talks about being born again of water and the Spirit. And, and we'll always remember her birthday, all right? But today is a birthday of sorts as well. And so what some uh, families have adopted as a custom is, is maybe bringing this candle out on her baptismal birthday. And just reminding her of the promises that were made to her today and her identity as a child of God. So uh, thank you all very much for being here today. Let's welcome Collins one more time. She's pretty cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. The first reading is from the book of Acts 1 through 11, chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 23. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at, the, at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, 
not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as we sing the Alleluia and verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. You You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You guys remember Easter? <laughs> it's kind of a while ago, though I'm still wearing the rainbows and the, you know, the butterflies and stuff like that. But we'll be done with that pretty soon. Um, today we're talking about Ascension Day. Think back to Easter. Think to now. This is about the length that Jesus was here on the earth, doing things, making appearances between Easter Sunday, his resurrection, and then his ascension. 
And we don't know everything he was doing during that time. We get a few glimpses, right? Right there on Easter Sunday, he appears to, well, Mary in the garden and the disciples in the locked room. And then he comes back a week later for Thomas. And, and as Brandon calls it, the uh, barbecue on the beach, you know, where the disciples are in the boat and he's on the shore and they come and they eat with Jesus. And, you know, there's the road to Emmaus. You know, there's, there's various kind of uh, episodes that we can look at, but you turn to the epistles, so you look at 1 Corinthians 15, and, and St. Paul tells the church that Jesus didn't just appear to his disciples, but over that, over that span of time, those 40 days, he appeared to over 500 people. And he'd get together with his disciples periodically, and he had very important messages for them. Go and wait in Jerusalem. Wait for the, the Holy Spirit. And he's foreshadowing Pentecost. And, and he gives them orders. He sends them out. You know, go out into the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. This is where you get the Great Commission. Go therefore make disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching. So some stuff happens between Easter and Ascension Day. And then he goes up. And what a sight that must have been. You can only imagine, you know, seeing pictures, seeing children's messages like DCE Emily did there. But that would have been a real sight to behold. And there's a lot to think about, you know, the meaning of the ascension. Big question I tend to ask is where is Jesus now? It's a fair question, right? We, we tend to talk about Jesus in the past tense. What He did. What He said. What He taught. Where is Jesus present tense? Where is He now? And there's different ways that you can answer that. Theologically appropriate ways that you can answer that. Uh, probably the best way is to say He is at the right hand of the Father. And again, when you're a kid, you think about some ethereal throne in heaven, you know, in the clouds or something, or in space, or, you know, and there's a slightly smaller throne right there, and, and the big guy is in the big chair, and then Jesus is right there on his right hand. But we know that's not what the right hand of the Father means. It's not describing a actual physical location or anything like that. It's, it's really a statement about his authority, his power. And Jesus talks about that before he ascends, right before he ascends. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So the right hand of the Father isn't about some physical location. It's about Jesus who is truly God taking on this authority over creation. But there's other ways we can talk about where Jesus is now that are good and appropriate. We could do really good Lutheran answers and say, well, we can find Jesus in his word. You know. Or if you want to go even further, we can find Jesus in His sacrament. This is my body. This is my blood. Receiving Jesus in the Lord's Supper. You want to get a little more evangelical about it? You can even say, and there's biblical precedent for this, not a lot, but a little, Jesus is in my heart. So where is Jesus? Well, that's a fair question. But when I was looking at this story today, the thing that really kind of stuck out to me isn't so much the ascension, it's what the angels said to the disciples as they're still looking up into the sky. They say, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who was taken away from you will come again in very much the same way. So there's the Jesus present tense question. What is he doing now? We believe that he is reigning on high. But there's also this question about Jesus future tense. What is he going to do? And that seems to be the bigger concern almost for the angels on the ground there. He is going to come again. When I think about the ascension, one way that I think about it is it is the beginning of the end. When we talk about history, we talk about different eras and epochs and ages, right? Stone ages and Bronze Ages and Renaissances and <laughs> Reformations and, you know, we kind of break things up. But as Christians, you know, 
there's kind of three eras. There's the world waiting for Jesus to come, the time when Jesus was here, and now the time we are waiting for him to return. And what ascension marks is the beginning of this present age. Some would call it these last days. Some might call it the end times. There's a lot of people who will stand on street corners or soapboxes and tell you, you know, we are in the end times. Repent and be saved. And we look at them and they're kind of looney tunes and we get, because they usually have a look in their eye. But they're not wrong either. Now, they may not know how right they are, but they're not wrong. We have been in these end times, in this last era, waiting for Christ to return since Ascension Day. Since He left. Jesus tells us this is how it's going to be. And that's what this sermon is today. It is a brief reminder of things that you already know. Christ is coming again. We say it every time we get together for worship. It's in both of the creeds. We go through that second article, that second paragraph. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered. He died. He rose. He ascended. He's coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Almost everything we talk about in the second article is past tense. He did this. He did this. He did this. He did this. The thing that we are waiting on is the fulfillment, the completion of that second article. He is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Jesus talks about that during his ministry. He tells his disciples, he tells us, that he is going to die, he is going to rise, he's going to ascend to the right hand of the Father, and at a day and hour that no one knows, he is going to come back. And he has this message for his disciples, and he has it for us. Watch. Be prepared. Don't fall asleep. He tells parables about it. He speaks plainly about it. He's coming again. He tells us that there will be certain signs that will be going on in the world that will remind us that He is coming again. That that day is drawing closer. It's a lot of the stuff the world has been dealing with, well, forever. Lovelessness corruption, wars and rumors of war, persecution. This is, a, sta this is, a, this is a, a steady thing. This is all around us all the time. We live in a world of chaos and calamity and heartbreak and consternation. And you go on and on and on. There's a lot of tough stuff going on in our world right now. And Jesus told us it would be this way. He says, when you see these things happening, do not despair, do not fall apart. Don't lose your faith. Instead, remember, these things were going to come to pass. And when you see these things, remember what I've told you. I am coming again. Jesus ascended into heaven. But to us, that means that he's coming back again. What goes up must come down. You know, it's an old idiom, right? Gravity. Gravity stardom, you know. Stars on the rise, then it falls. Stock market, maybe. Hopefully it's the other way. What goes down, hopefully comes back up. But when we think about Jesus and the ascension, remember that he's not just up there for good, wherever up there is. But remember the promise that he makes. He is coming again. The Bible if yours is like mine, your Bible has red letters where Jesus speaks. And you turn to the very last book of the Bible, Revelation, you turn to the very last chapter of Revelation, and you look at the very last red letter. It's Revelation 22. The last thing that Jesus says in the Bible is this. Surely I am coming again soon. To which John says, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Last thing that Jesus tells us in the Word is that He is coming again soon.
So this is your reminder today. The world seems chaotic and messy. Don't lose heart. Don't despair. Jesus was promised. He is coming again. So don't look up into the sky. (laughs) Prepare. Prepare your hearts, your minds. Jesus is coming again. Amen. We continue with our prayers. In our prayers this morning, we lift up to God for healing and strength Joe Duke, Joanne Fickner, Mark Feldy, Brian Dvorak, Gail Knudsen, Chris Myrold, Marilyn Mork, Rick Arguto, Don Nicholas, Jean Nicholas, Roxy Price, Doris Young, Lloyd Emerson, Sarah Emerson, Don Sanis, Darlene Link, Hannah Grubb, and Sony Meinke. Merciful Father, at your invitation, we come to you in prayer, trusting in your mercy to supply us with all that is needful and beneficial to us and for all for whom our prayers have been requested. Silence the doubts that plague us and deliver us from fear, that believing in you, we may know the full comfort of your gracious presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your church bold in the confession of your name before the world and give your blessing to all pastors and church workers as they accomplish your bidding and their service to us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard us from all enemies and bless our nation with good government and good leaders, that we enjoy justice before the law, equality of opportunity in the marketplace, and peace in our communities and between the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give comfort, healing, patience, and strength to the sick, to those suffering a troubled mind, and to those carrying the heavy burden of grief, that they may know your presence in their hour of need. Today we pray especially for Joe, Joanne, Mark, Brian, Gail, Chris, Marilyn, Rick, Don, Jean, Roxy, Doris, Lloyd, Sarah, Don, Darlene, Hannah, and Sony. Lord, in your mercy... Remembering the disciples, the saints, the martyrs, and those who taught us the faith and now rest from their labors, bring us with them through the day of trouble into the dawn of peace and the place of everlasting light and life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. This time we worship the Lord with our offerings.
We continue with the service of the sacrament. It can be found on page 208. Of course, we'll have the liturgy on the screen as well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree. For all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
by the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. We stand and sing the Nook Dimittis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, a hymn of glory, let us sing.
please be seated. I just want to say welcome to any guests or visitors. Congratulations uh, to Edlin family. It's great to have you. And thank you for letting us witness uh, Collins' baptism. That's a great blessing for all of us to see a baptism, to sort of pledge our support, but also remember our own identities as God's baptized children. So uh, God's blessings to the Edlin family. Uh, just a reminder, Bible class downstairs. We're making our way through Hebrews. Sunday school carnival. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, and the voters meeting after the late service. So just a big packed day. It wasn't a very long sermon today. It might have seemed long, but it wasn't that long. And I knew it was going to be a pretty packed service. And I just wanted to remind you of one thing. When we think about the ascension of Jesus, uh, when we think about where he is now, we also need to focus on the future. You know, Jesus has promised to come again. The angels are there to remind the disciples on Ascension Day, and I'm trying to remind you of that today. He is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead and to make all things new. So we wait for that day with eager expectation. God bless you all today. Vicar Brandon and I will greet you in the hallway.